Morning Year 8. Uh, this video is about how to answer your, or how to do the lesson with assignment two or lesson two this week. And also I'm just going to go through again how you're going to access this on Microsoft Teams and how to hand it in. Okay. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go to Microsoft Teams. Now I've got mine open already, but a reminder that the web address you need is teams.microsoft.com or you can follow the link that I'm going to send to you on email. So there are lots of ways that you can access your work. Now you're going to go ahead and go to your Teams page. How do you do that? Well, if you look at these icons down the side, you'll see that one of them is Teams. You're going to click on that. You'll notice I've done that already. And then I'm going to click on History Year 8, which is our team. Now you'll notice that in our posts, and you may have been notified about this as well, that um, you've got a new assignment. Summer term, lesson two, new inquiry, migration through time. That's because we're starting a new inquiry question today, which is, is very exciting. And um, now you're gonna go ahead and just start by clicking on view assignment, that button that should kind of highlight in, in a more lilac color when you hover over it. Click on that. Once you've clicked on it, it will take you to the assignment. Now yours won't look like the page is about to load for me because this tells me who has and who hasn't done it. Um, oh, somebody's viewed it already. Well done, Marion. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on student view because this is what it will look like for you, okay? And you can see that it tells you to complete this assignment in exactly the same way as lesson one, um, complete the tasks. And when you're finished in, you need to click hand in. Now, there is a video that you need to watch. You must watch for this assignment because otherwise you won't be able to do it. It comes later in the lesson. I'll show you as we're walking or talking through it. Um, you'll also see it says, I've also created a video going through the lesson, uh, colon, and then there's no address. Well, that's because I'm making that video right now and I'll add it to the description or after I've finished. Um, you're just going to go ahead and click on the document that says year seven, uh, sorry, History Year 8, Summer Term, Week 1, Lesson 2. Okay. Um, in fact, whilst I'm at it, I'm going to make sure that you can edit this document because I think at the moment I haven't set it for editing. So just bear with me one second while I change it. There we go. Now you can all go ahead and edit that. Okay. I'm just going to, when it loads again, I'm just going to click on it and um, show you what it will look like and remind you what you need to do. So it will look when you first load it like this. Now a warning that when I, or when you click on edit document and edit in browser, it is gonna move some of these things around. Unfortunately, Word Online, if I'm honest, is a little bit rubbish and it moves things around. You can't use text boxes. It doesn't like pictures, various things like that. Just bear with it. When Once you've gone out of edit mode, it will go back to how it was before. So don't worry about having to get things in exactly the same place. You're not going to lose any marks. I'm not going to mark you down or get annoyed if the formatting is slightly wrong either. So don't panic, okay? But to edit this document, I'm going to click on edit document. Now, as I've said before, you can edit it in the desktop app and upload it if you want to. And um, you can print this off by clicking print and uh, take a picture and upload that. I'll remind you again how to do that at the end. But by far the easiest way for you to do this is to click edit in browser. And that means we can edit it here. Now, as I promised, it is gonna move around and do lots of funny things, which is annoying, but we'll just deal with it. Now, the first thing you're gonna want to do is read the title, Migration to Britain after World War II. Then you're gonna to want to go ahead and read the keywords and the definitions. Now, before you do that, I'm also gonna to send to you on email and add to the assignment the entire workbook, okay? So if you go and look at that workbook, you'll see that your knowledge organizer is there. In addition, all of the old knowledge organizers are also on that workbook. So you might need to always have that open when you're doing these lessons, so you can keep referring back to the full booklet. This is just one lesson from the booklet, okay? So pause the video here, 
and go ahead and read the keywords and definitions. Thanks. Once you've done that, you'll notice that the quiz it and, and the first task, we're gonna recap our chronology, okay? So task A, it adds, asks you to add the following events, ones that you've studied this year, to the timeline of the British Empire specifically on the next page. So we're sort of bringing all of our knowledge of the empire together. Now I apologize, it's done a weird thing and it's moved my A's and my B's, etc., around, but just bear with it. Um, you're gonna go down onto the next page and where it says type here, you're gonna write where these events come. Now you don't need to type out each event. You can just write the letter A, B, C, D, E, and so on, okay? So for example, um, the first one, Elizabeth I gives the East India Company their Royal Charter. Well, I know that that happens in the roughly 1600. So I'm just gonna use the space bar to navigate across. And then I'm just gonna write the letter A there, okay? Now, you may well run out of room on that line. That's why you've got lots of space underneath. The easiest way for you to navigate is to do that with the arrow buttons. I've already made this page big enough for you, so you don't need to use enter. If you just press down or up, that's how I'm navigating at the moment, on the arrow buttons, then you can type whatever you need. So you'll have plenty of room. Once you've finished plotting these events, the letters A to J, you're then gonna go ahead and plot some extra events, some, some which might be new to you. We did do right at the start of the year, but hey, you may not remember them. So what you're going to do, exactly the same as you did with the letters, is just read each event and plot them on the timeline. Now these are a little bit easier because I've given you the dates. Okay, for example, number one, 1577 to 1581, Francis Drake and his crew circumnavigate, that means sail around the world. Well, I'm gonna fly across to about 1577, or go back really to about 1577, and I would just type the number one there. Okay, simple. So the first task is to plot all of the letters you're gonna to have to use your memory to remember where those things are. And all of the numbers, I've given the dates for you. On the timeline, again, use the arrow buttons to move up or down. You can type anywhere on that page. Pause the video here, complete that task. Now it should take you at least 10 minutes. Now, once you've done that, you're going to need to go ahead and read the text at the top of the next page about a chap called Enoch Powell. Pause the video here, read it now. Okay, now there are some tricky keywords in here, so I'm going to read it to you just in case you've not understood some of them. It's time that we thought about how the British Empire has changed Britain. There's been a lot of arguments over the last few years about migration, ending with the Brexit vote in 2016. 52% of the British public voted to leave the EU. Sometimes Britain today can feel pretty divided, but why is migration such a hot topic? That should say A, not as. What can history tell us? The picture below is politician Enoch Powell talking about this picture. In the 1960s, he gave two speeches, which some historians say sparked the debate about migration. You're going to read parts of his speeches and try to work out what he was claiming. So, it says that you need to analyze extract one, then pick a box by writing the number below where it says type number here, which best summarizes what Enoch Powell is claiming. So go ahead, please, and read extract one. Pause the video here, read extract one now.
Okay, there are some tricky words in here, so I'm going to read it to you again. The nationhood of the mother country. Now, those two words are in bold because they are key words that I've given you earlier in the lesson. So if you're stuck, go back and have a look. And I can see that nationhood means national identity. So kind of what makes British, Britain British, what makes us feel British. And the mother country, that means the lead country of an empire. So the lead or the main country in the British Empire, the mother country, was Britain. I'm going to go back to the extract. Now I know what those mean. The nationhood of the mother country has remained unaltered, unchanged, through it all. So what that's saying is during the empire, well, Britain hasn't changed. The idea of Britain, the nationhood of Britain, hasn't been changed by the empire. Almost unconscious. If you're unconscious, it means you don't know something is happening. If you're unconscious, you've been knocked out. Almost unconscious of the strange, fantastic structure the British Empire built around it. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to need to select one of the coloured boxes from underneath, the one which I think summarises what his claim is here. So I'm just going to do that by writing a number where it says type number here. So I need you now to pause the video, read each of the three coloured boxes and do that for yourself now. OK, so I think the best way for you to do this if you're struggling is to read each of the three boxes in turn and, and eliminate them if you think they don't match. The British Empire changed British culture and values and the population came, became diverse. Now, I don't think that one fits because, as I said above, it says that the nation of the mother country, Britain, the idea of being British, has remained unaltered. It has not changed. And Britain was unconscious of the British Empire. Britain didn't really notice the British Empire was happening, is what he's saying here. So I don't think one is going to fit. Um, three, British culture and values and the population has always been diverse. Well, I don't think, again, that's what it's necessarily saying here. Um, two, the British Empire did not change. British culture and values and the population did not become more diverse. I think number two fits best. So I'm just going to type two underneath here. Now, once I've done that, you're then going to need to go ahead and summarise um, what Enoch Powell's first claim was. Now, what I mean by that is you're going to write out the extract in your own words. Pause the video here. Have a go at doing that now. Okay, so if this were me, I think I'd be saying something like, well, Enoch Powell believed Britain was not changed by the empire and was not a diverse country. Now, if you're not sure what diverse means, I'd suggest, like I said at the start, go back and look at the knowledge organizer. I've sent you a copy of the full version of this booklet. It has the knowledge organizer in there. Okay, great. Once you've done that, you're going to do exactly the same thing, this time with extract two, a second claim that Enoch Powell made in his speech in the 1960s. So go ahead and read extract two, thanks. Pause the video here and do that now. OK, again, I'm going to read it to you just to make sure it's clear. England has the opportunity to rediscover her true inner self. Our generation is one which comes home again from years of distant wandering in the British Empire. 
we discover affinities, that means closeness, with earlier generations of English who felt no country but this to be their own. The English can revert, return, to being the people we were before the ships of Elizabethan and Stuart England set off to forge the first British Empire in the Americas. You're going to do the same thing as you did before. There are three coloured boxes there, three different summaries. Read all three, select the one that you think fits best. Once you've decided which one it fits best, you're going to type your number here, where it says type number here. Pause the video, do that now. If you haven't already, pause the video. Okay, so which of these boxes fits best? Well, the first one, the British Empire, was over, they had to stay in touch with their colonies. I don't think that's what Enoch Powell is saying. He's definitely not saying that they should keep in touch. What, how do I know that? Well, he says that Britain can revert, return. If they're going backwards. They're not going to want to keep in touch. Now the empire was over, Britain could carry on as it was because it had already been changed by the empire. Again, I don't think that fits because he's saying, and if I go back to extract one, he's saying that Britain was unaltered by the empire. And then in extract two, he's saying Britain can rediscover itself. Britain can revert. I think he's saying it's returning Britain to something it was before the empire even existed. Number three. Now the empire was over, England could go back to what English life was like before the empire existed. This is the one. Why do I think that? Well, all of those things I said earlier about returning or reverting, but especially this last sentence. Britain can be the people they were before the ships of the Elizabethan and Stuarts set off to forge the British Empire in the Americas. Now, that's very poetic. But what Enoch Powell is saying here is that Britain's empire starts in Elizabethan and, and Stuart England with Sir Francis Drake circumnavigating the globe, with Jamestown being set up in Virginia. Um, and now the empire was over, Britain had an opportunity to go back to that, to return to what it was like before the empire. So I'm going to type number three. I think that fits best. Now, again, there's a second layer here. I want you to pick the Britain which you think Enoch Powell argued Britain was like before the empires by writing the number of the picture that you think matches best to Enoch Powell's vision of Britain below. Pick the picture, write the number of the picture which you think matches Enoch Powell's Britain best. You've got 30 seconds. Pause the video here, do that now. Okay, so you should, I think, have written number one, um, because clearly what Enoch Powell is saying is that Britain has not been changed by the empire, um, and Britain should return to what it was like before the empire. Now, let's not beat around the bush here. What Enoch Powell is talking about is Britain being mainly white. Um, now, personally, that's not the type of Britain that I want to live in, uh, I really love the fact that we're a multicultural nation now. But this, these are the types of claims that we're going to start to test. Um, is Enoch Powell correct? Could Britain return to that? Had Britain actually been affected by empire? But also, um, is his vision of empire white? Is that actually true? Have there been other ethnic groups living in Britain, migrating to Britain before the empire. 
These are all things we're going to test over the next couple of weeks. We'll move on. Underneath, the last step is to just summarise in your own words, like we did above, what Enoch Powell's second claim is. So you might want to reread what he said here in extract two. Remind yourself what box you circled. Remind yourself which picture matches it best. And then you're going to summarise underneath. Now, I'm not going to write this one for you. So you're going to do this on your own. Pause the video here. It should take you at least two minutes. Do that task now. Okay, now extract three, similar drill. is another extract from Enoch Powell's speech. You need to read extract three, pause the video here, do that now. Okay, I'm gonna read it to you because there's some tricky words here that I want to go through. For reasons which they could not comprehend. Comprehend means understand. Comprehend means understand. For reasons which they could not comprehend, the indigenous population. Now, again, what does that word indigenous mean? Well, if I go up to my keywords from the start of the lesson, I can see that indigenous means people originally from a country, natives to that country. So in this context, Enoch Powell is talking about British people people from Britain. For reasons they could not comprehend, understand, the indigenous population, British people, found themselves made strangers in their own country. Their homes and neighbourhoods changed beyond all recognition. Now, you're going to do it on your own this time. The same drill as before. You're going to read the three summaries. Type the number of the summary you think matches best, where it says type number here. And then summarise what Enoch Powell's third claim was underneath, where it says type here. That whole task should take you at least three or four minutes. Pause the video here and do that now. Okay, now the next task, you need to read the extract underneath. Now, I'm not going to read this one to you. You should be checking keywords in your knowledge organizer or the keywords at the start of this lesson. Or if you're working on a laptop, you could check Google, etc. But whatever, you should be reading the extract to yourself, pause the video and do that now. Okay, now hopefully you've read that and understood that why this is happening, why Enoch Powell is making this speech in the 1960s. It all has to do with the Empire Windrush arriving in 1948 with those 492 migrants from the Caribbean. And then subsequent, that means afterwards, more migration from people from the Caribbean, people from India, from other parts of Asia and Africa, countries that were part of the British Empire. And, and hopefully you've also gone on and read about the impacts that this has continued to have. 
closer to Enoch Powell's speeches with things like the Brixton riots in 1981. Brixton is in South London. Um, or even today with the impact on, on the Brexit vote in 2016. Now, of course, that Brexit vote was contributed to greatly by the UKIP party, and their leader at the time was Nigel Farage. Now, when I was doing some research planning this inquiry, I came across a really interesting video where Nigel Farage talks about Enoch Powell and also makes a claim about migration and the East End of London specifically. A claim that I'm not sure about. You're gonna watch a video, and actually I'm gonna play this on this video, so you don't have to bother about going to find it, etc. but I will put it in the lesson explanation as well on Microsoft Teams and email it to you. You're gonna watch the video and do the same as you did before with Enoch Powell's claims. There are three colored boxes, you're going to read each one and decide which one fits best with what he is saying. Now, these haven't got numbers on them, I just noticed, but the yellow one, that will be number one, the orange one or orange pinky one, number two, and the blue box, number three. So if you think it's the yellow one, you're going to type one, where it says type number here. If you think it's the orangey pinky one, you'll type two. And if you think it's the blue one, you'll type three. OK, then when you're finished, and again, I'm not going to help you with this, you're going to uh, summarize Nigel, Farage, Nigel Farage's claim where it says type here. OK, as I said, I'm going to play the video now so you can watch it in my video, which is useful. I've got a quotation here uh, about the impact of immigration on the existing population for reasons which they could not comprehend. The indigenous population found themselves made strangers in their own country, their wives unable to obtain hospital beds in childbirth, their children unable to obtain school places, their homes and neighbourhoods changed beyond recognition. I mean, you'd agree with that, would you? I, in a lot of England, that's true. And you know where that's from, don't you? I don't know. Enoch Powell's Rivers of Blood speech. Is it? So-called well, Rivers of Blood. Well, uh, what he was warning about uh, was that if you have a large uh, influx of people into an area, the change in area beyond recognition, there is tension. That basic principle is right. So we saw it but, coming back in 1968. Uh, no, it was coming. Uh, for different reasons. For different reasons and on a completely different scale. I mean, when when immigration was being discussed in the 60s and 70s and, and, and 80s, we were talking about an annual net inflow to the country of between 30 and 50,000 people mm -hmm. a year. What we've had in the last 13 years is net 4 million extra migrants that have come to Britain. So we're dealing with something now on a scale that hitherto we couldn't have even... But it's about perceptions and realities as well, isn't it? Because Enoch Powell made that speech back in the 60s, predicted, and I've just read through it again, by 1985 that a quarter of the, the population would be born outside the United Kingdom. That didn't come to pass, but, you know, but, well, people, actually, but people, people think that. Would you well, know, actually, you well, know if, the actual if, figures are if, if you look at the figures in London... Oh, no, no, no. What's the overall UK figure for people born outside the UK? Oh, uh, it's about 11 to 12 percent. Yeah, it's, 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 it's all right. Well, but, but people, but what, what do people think it is? Oh, people, people probably think it's higher. And if we look at parts of the East End of London, for example, uh, we find wildly different figures. Yeah. I mean, the point is. No, this. no, no, no. But it's, like, it's that this. perception and reality yeah. that people actually think. An Ipsos Mori poll last yeah. week, they 31 percent. That's what yeah. people think overall is the population born outside the immigration the UK, debate. Which is wrong. The key to the immigration debate is do our politicians have any control of it or not? And the answer is no. For a little help making recipes you will all love. Okay, apologies. Um, so uh, you should have watched that, obviously. I now need you, as I said before, to decide which of those three boxes best summarizes what he is saying. Remember yellow, number one, orange, number two, blue, number three. Once you've done that, you're going to summarise what Nigel Farage's claim was below. It should take you about four minutes to do that. Pause the video here. Do that now. Now, hopefully it was quite clear what Nigel Farage's claim was there. 
His claim was that although across the UK, the amount of people born living in Britain, born outside the UK is around sort of 11%, that in London is much, much higher. That's the fourth claim that we're going to unpick in this inquiry and actually our last lesson. So you have to wait for that one. The next thing I need you to do is actually watch one of my videos. Now, again, I'm going to play this video in this video, if it were, but I've also uploaded it to the assignment. So you can watch the video either way. Bizarrely, you'll notice I'm wearing the same clothes because I did it this morning. Morning, Year 8. You've been learning lots in this lesson about migration through time. In particular, you've learned about a number of claims made by Enoch Powell in the 1960s and by Nigel Farage more recently. Now, their claims are that migration had changed Britain negatively and that migration was something new. It didn't exist in Britain before the empire. Here's the thing, Yuri. I'm just not that convinced by their claims. I don't think their claims are backed up by enough historical evidence. In fact, I think if I went back and I look at the facts, the historical evidence that does exist, I might find something completely different to what they're claiming. I think I might find that although migration has changed Britain, it's not necessarily something new. Now, there's only one way I can do this, and it means I've got to go way back in time. And you're going to go on that journey with me over the next few lessons. And by the end of this new inquiry, how far was Britain changed beyond all recognition by migration? We will have gone right back to the Roman times and built up a better picture of what migration to Britain has looked like through time, how that has shaped us as a nation, and also whether we can prove using historical evidence that Enoch Powell and Nigel Farage's claims are a little bit dodgy. I can't wait for you to experience this journey with me, Year 8. Okay. Oops. Do you and your team need to work remotely? Monday.com brings your team together wherever you are. Just going to mute that. For some reason, it won't let me change it. And okay, so for some reason, it didn't like that, and it can't play the video. But it's all right. You don't really need to see me. And um, now, once you've watched that clip, you need to then do two more things in this lesson. The first thing you need to summarize, recap what those four claims that Enoch Powell made, his first three, one, two, three that we've gone through, and Nigel Farage's claim is at the bottom. Write in your own words what those claims were. Why? Because we need to recap, make sure we understand how they or what they were talking about. The final thing that you then need to do is to pick one of those claims that you've written above and decide whether you agree or disagree with it. Now, it's totally up to you. You're just going to pick one, and you might agree with it, you might disagree with it. Whichever is totally fine. Whatever your, or whichever one you've picked, I then want you to explain how you feel about it. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Are you unsure about it? Do you need to test it? Are you angry about something somebody has claimed? And then you're just going to type your answer to that question where it says type your answer here underneath. And the last thing you can do if you've finished that is answer the challenge question. What evidence do you already know which could prove or disprove any of the four claims? Think about what you've learned this year in our study of the empire. Do you know anything already which doesn't seem to fit with what Enoch Powell 
or Nigel Farage are saying. You're going to make a list of evidence and then explain how that evidence proves or disproves the claim underneath. You're going to type where it says type here. Simple. Thanks, Yuri. Enjoy the lesson.